So there is one other, uh, one of the, the other papers that we didn't really touch upon is I think quite an important one that deals with comparing the uh, findings in these cells that are extracted from the bloodstream of patients with the findings about cells that come from laboratory created what we call cell line cells. So up until, well not, most cancer research is done either in mice or other animal models or it's done in what we call cell lines which is where you take you create a sort of a cancer in the lab. It starts out from a human cancer, but then you do a bunch of stuff to it and you make it so that you can keep the cells growing in the lab for a long, long time, which makes it very easy to do research on them, of course, because they're right there whenever you need them and you can just take some out and do your research. The problem with that is that those cells are not exactly the same as cancers that actually grow and spread in human beings. And so there's all of this wonderful information that we have about cancer biology that's come from studies in these cell lines, and there's been a, a great difficulty with translating a lot of that information over into humans. And, and so one of the things that we have always done is all of our work pretty much is based on human samples, human primary tumor samples, uh, human blood samples that have cancer cells in them. So the paper that I want to mention here is that what we did was we went back and we compared the findings in a standard cell line that's used in hundreds of labs across the country to cells from an actual patient, and we tried to create like the, the translational table. So here's what it looks like in this setting, the cell line setting, and here's what it looks like when it actually comes from the patient, trying to provide a little translational dictionary so that anyone else who's trying to do these kinds of studies maybe can translate some of that reams of data that we have on the cell lines into actual patient samples. So that's a really interesting, because there are differences, as we knew there would be, um, but it's, it's interesting to start to get a handle on exactly what those differences are, which is what that paper is about. And that was for us on the technical side, of course, an interesting challenge. How can we do that calibration so that you have that table of translation that Kelly's talking about? Because it's actually quite difficult uh, to do experiments, and this took us quite a while, to do experiments in such a way that the, uh, the outcome of both experiments can actually be truly linked together yeah. and connected. So that was a, a, an interesting technical, uh, technical challenge that we undertook there and uh, we were quite pleased with the outcome because um, what we have found is that there are certain parameters uh, that you find in these cell lines that are completely different from what we find uh, in, um, in primary uh, uh, samples from the, from the patient uh, and there's other parameters uh, that are actually quite similar. So again, that is the beginning of this, of this work that really starts comparing uh, findings in the laboratory setting with cell lines to findings in, in the patients themselves. And that is what we are really hoping to take forward from this is our, our ability to have analytical tools that allows us to understand cancer as a disease in the patients as opposed to uh, only in model systems.